Hi, it's Chris from LearnGrasshopper.com. Welcome to the guide to understanding parametric curves in Grasshopper. Parametric curves are essential for designing complex shapes and forms in Grasshopper. They are curves that are designed by the set of parameters and they allow you to create dynamic, flexible and precise designs. In this video, we'll take a closer look at how parametric curves work in Grasshopper as well as importance of curve parameters and domains. So you will finally grab the concept of parametric curves. This lesson is one of the lessons from my comprehensive Grasshopper training, where I am taking a user from zero programming experience and going through step-by-step -step 13 well-structured modules with more than 300 practical exercises. This training is the first step to becoming an engineer for zero with skills that allow automating of the time-consuming work and taking design to the next level. Advanced users will take a lot from this training as well. On the grasshopperfundamentals.com, you can sign up for the next edition of this online training and re reserve your seat. I will let you know when the next edition will start and come up with the best offer. Now, let's go to the lesson. So here we have a case. We have a Bob on the bicycle, the, and Bob would like to travel from his house to city. As you can see, his uh, roadmap, his roadmap. So first he needs to go to the hill, and after he goes ski ride, go to the city with a slope. Bob has a watch as a truly bi bicycle tra trainer. Uh, he he also always check what time is in his path to city. So he is trying to start his journey. So first 10 minutes, so he made some distance uh, of the road. The next, the next time then he checked when he was at the hill, at the top hill, it was after 40 minutes. So he registered his every 10 minutes where he was in the, uh, in the road to the city. Afterwards, uh, after the hill, it was much faster to go down. So you can see that distances changed uh, a lot. So you can see that at 80 minutes, he was nearly close to the city. And finally, it took for him 100 minutes to go from his house to the city. So what is really important here that this curve we can take to this curve for this uh, for this hill and going the road to the city as a parametric curve and this point that he measured after every 10 uh, minutes we can think about that is our control points so this is what we called a non-uniform parametrization so as you will see that if we measure 0 0.5 uh, and in our parametric curve, so we are not strictly be in the middle of our curve. As in our example, as you can as you can see, Bob had to make a bicycle ride up to the hill, and of course, it it took for him much more time. The same is uh, with uh, non-uniform parametrization of the control points. So here, the distance between com control points defining how steep the slope is. So we can just uh, make a, some kind of assumption. So here it's not defining the length, so it's not equal, so the distance between control points. So here is a type of a parametric curve, but you can see that this distance, this control point, is a really long way to the end one. And that's why here is a distribution much bigger because of the distance from one control point to another. And this is really, really important because when we are going to evaluate the curves and sometimes we would like to evaluate in the middle, so you will see that the middle 0 0.5, it's not always in the middle of the curve when we talk about the total length. It will be in the middle when we talk about uniform parametrization. Uniform parametrization, it will be just on the one case when the line is exactly straight. 
So we have the degree uh, degree equal number one. So we have a point from one. Mm, a po uh, sorry, we have a line from one point to another point. So actually, in the straight line, we have equal distribution. So there is a if we think about control points, so there's an equal distance between these two points. That's why when we just come back to the previous one, it's not uh, equally uniform parametrization. All right, so it was about non-uniform and uniform parametrization. Now we can go to the topic like a domain again. So domain are used to define a range of all possible values, these p parameters that go along the curve between a set of numbers between the lower limit and the upper limit. So as you remember, we talk about this uh, curves like a, a polynomial where there is an infinite, infinite curve. So actually we are going to uh, just take a part of this curve. So there is one component which is called curve domain. So you can actually check what is the actual uh, base origin uh, domain of the curve. So here if you have a, as a, in the picture right now, you can see two curves which are exactly the same curves. Like when we speak about geometry, so we have the same con number control of points, we have the same degree. So everything is the same, but you will see that the curve domain is different. So first one, is from 0 to 58.12. And this is how we are describing. So we are starting on 0 and our end is our 50 end point 12. But we can actually modify this curve and we can make the simplification and change this domain from 0 to 1. We are not going to change anything in the geometry because we have again the same number of points and the same degree. So here we are just taking, looking for the, make a some simplification uh, in which range we are going to find this possible values. So this is why we use curve domain. And this in Grasshopper can be done really, really quickly. If you right click on your input data, as here, for example, in one component, which is uh, input is curve, just to right click so you can so you can choose another option so we have reverse we have flatten we have graft and simplify which we talked about that before and in addition to that we have something called reparametrization reparametrize so it's defining a new start and end value for the domain and in grasshopper its domain is going to change from 0 to 1 and in this course, we are going to just work on the reparametrized re curves. So remember, every time when we are going to change, find some parameters, we are going to work on the curves with the domain from zero to one. So just right click and change to re uh, and, and, and choose reparametrize. Another useful component that I, I will show you soon is a evaluate curve. So actually here in the input you have a curve which again will be reparametrized and we have parameter. So actually in every specific parameter we are going uh, to check what is the point on that. So location of a point, so x, y and z coordinates. We're going to find the tangent, the vector. I will go. I will going to show you what what the tangent uh, what tangent mean and an uh, angle in randomness in, of an incoming and outgoing curve at the parameter. So let's take a look on the curve. So we have our parametric curve, which are is defined from zero to as our t zero like a start, and our domain ends on the. 80.5. You can see you can see this uh, value over here. So if we are going to uh, check our parameters, so we connect our curve to our curve and parameter, we check on the zero. So we will get our value with our point x, y, and z coordinate, and we will get the tangent. And tangent is here that if in this point we are going to make a circle which is perpendicular uh, to this point. So we are making a circle with the radius and the tangent is will be the vector that is 90 degrees to the radius of this circle created like it's touching this curve. 
because curve has her own curvature. So you, you can create this tangent. So let's take another point. So for example, here we are going to t value 12.5. This is not parametric curve from domain zero to one. So we are having another set of points. So again, we are just moved. Let me see, I just come back. So we are moving our evaluating in the another point. So again, we are finding the point. We are finding a circle where it's touching this point and then 90 degrees uh, vector to the radius of this circle. You will see that we are going to use the ta this tangent a lot. So again, we are going to next value, 25.1. So we are going to evaluate on the another one and, and so on. So we are evaluating in every single point to obtain our, uh, our values. And if we go to 80.5, so you will see that we are getting the tangent that is at the end and of course the end point. And of course, if you are going to create, check, evaluate curve on the parameter 100, it will find, it will find some values, but it will be out of the range of this curve because our curve is our infinite curve. So program actually will find some values for you because he is going to approximate how this curve will look like in the in the whole this polynomial how it's going to be described but remember that we are going to just evaluate in this set of parameters so that was our theory so let's go to grasshopper and i show you how these components work in practice if you like this video and you think it's practical give it a thumb up if you know someone who still struggles with grasshopper, please share it. Maybe this video will change the way of working for someone. Now, I invite you to grasshopperfundamentals.com where you can register for the next edition and get the best offer from me. See you on the learning platform. Have a good one.